I'd like to talk about Obra Negra, which is a series of drawings I'm showing at the moment at the North Dakota Museum of Art. And I'll, I'll begin by explaining a little bit about the title of the work. It's called Obra Negra, which is a Spanish expression for something that is undergoing construction. Most of uh, the houses in the slums have a very long constructing process. It takes usually two or three generations before completion. And that's the state of those houses whilst they are being produced or finished. And I thought uh, the title was very eloquent because when you visit these slums, that's all you see. All these houses are midway before completion. The roofs are probably not finished, the walls. So everything is uh, in a way very chaotic, um, not very good for living in them. It's difficult conditions for all the people living in them. So that's what gave the name to the whole series. An overview of, of the series of drawings would be um, the very fragile structure of these constructions made by hand, where there are no um, preliminary plans, where there is no architect or engineering uh, studies beforehand, but people just doing their own house with very little means and very little knowledge of what they're doing, but uh, they manage to construct these buildings and, and make them lasting buildings, at least for a couple of years. When I started to do the work, I was very much focused on the buildings themselves, on the structure, on the asymmetry of, of these buildings. They all looked in a different stage, in a, in a different shape. And because they are made of little parts, just like a collage, there is no uniformity at all. I became more and more aware of the fact that the fragility was not only in the structure and the poor materials that were used, but also on the inhabitants of those houses, and especially on uh, the role that uh, small girls are, are being um, pushed into a situation where they have to look for after their smaller brothers and sisters or very elderly people. So there is an enormous burden on their shoulders to keep these houses going um, despite their very short age. The mothers are usually the ones responsible for finding this very little spot where they, they start constructing. Uh, they have large amounts of, of children at very early age, at 25, for example, they will already have five or six children. There have been a non-declared war for many, many, many years. It's calculated about 50 or 60 years uh, going on this civil war. So country women um, are left on their own to keep, uh, keep their families together and find all the resources for their own children until they can't keep going on living in the countryside, so they flee to the big cities to try and find a job or some, some other means to have their family together and care for them. Um, but these women have very little education, and usually the jobs they can do are very badly paid, and they have to work very, very long hours. So they are not around the house to take care of their children, so they leave uh, this task to do their eldest daughter. Even if they have older boys, uh, the task will go to the little girl because it's like a role they are imposed since very, very young. I'd like to talk about uh, how these uh, slums developed and why the problem became so big. It's um, the, the, um, it's uh, supposed to be around the 50s, around the 60s, that the cities grew very, very rapidly, very, very largely, because all the country people had to flee to the cities. And imagine one city as large as Grand Forks will be added to uh, a city every year. So it's, it's so big, it's so fast that even if there were some means to 
to make it work. It just grows too fast, and the government, uh, uh, governmental aid is, is not enough to, to accommodate all, all these people at, 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 that, at that rate, at that uh, velocity. Most uh, of the slums began in rich or wealthy uh, neighborhoods that were derelict, that, that became less and less appealing for the former inhabitants. So the houses began to get squatted. And in one house where a large family used to live, suddenly it was squatted by 20, 25 uh, families at the same time. Of course, running water was no longer available, uh, neither electricity, anything else. So they became the center of a new slum. Some of the houses around uh, were turned down or simply couldn't take the, the weight or the circumstances of having um, too many people that were torn down. And around those big houses, probably first in the yards, then on the streets, on, on the other, other yards around. Other houses were built with, with very little means, with cardboard, with wood, uh, scrap wood, whatever they would find that probably it could serve as a, as a way of having something similar to a roof. Usually these houses are, are built in very small areas and the only way to, to grow or to have a, uh, an additional space is to go up. So they have usually two or three stores above them, but because they are very fragile because of the poor materials, because there is no engineering or the, any studies of building them during the process, um, they tend to go down most of the time. Usually the terrain is also very weak, sometimes it's only sand or the, its uh, terrains where the floods are very frequent and it's uh, very steep as well because the terrains they occupy are terrains where nobody else can really construct anything there so they are very weak they are very fragile they usually make their way to electricity in an illegal way they really rob it from other posts of when they see um, a regular electricity pole they just make a connection, a handmade connection, and they take that.